The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Last day of January, month will close. You're going to see this is going to be a very interesting close because December was the 43rd month in the left side, right side time match. We'll go through that all in a moment, but thank you to uh, Tom, Steve, and Daryl. Great a few hours, and of course, we go programming all the way through the day. And uh, a couple of things are happening here that are really important. But first of all, let me say hi, everyone. 877-927-6648 is the number to call. And the charts that you're looking at right at this moment, it shows you the left side, right side. The left side here is the daily chart of the S&P E-mini. You see these arch formations that keep on forming? Keep keeping on testing, but haven't broken the key 97, 1970 January low and the 1961 December 16th low a month earlier. Um, and here's the weekly chart still holding that up channel support line. 120 minute chart just constantly for days now has been making these arch formations. Look at that arch, arch, arch failure. Um, let me do a couple of things here. I'm going to just run the numbers. Dow's down 113 at 17,303. The S&P's down 15 at two, uh, 2006. The uh, comp index is down 19 at 46.63. Gold is having a nice rally. It's up 18, although it's, it really got hit yesterday. It's at uh, 12.74. Silver's up 39 cents at 17.17. Platinum's up 7 at 12.28. You've got high-grade copper. It's up 3. Point four at two point four eight, you know, copper. <laughs> Gee, not a good sign. Not a good sign. Nice little try attempt to bounce. You're making of the third uh, try to make some kind of a base here, just above two forty two. Would it be two forty? Yeah, just above two forty two. You got crude oil now. This is going to be really interesting. Is crude oil about to have a little bit of a bounce if the dollar starts to pull back? We'll talk about that. And we'll we've got the bonds. Look at this. The TLT went to a leg E. Sorry, went to a leg F. It could have recycled even. Um, we'll see. But in, in the meantime, the uh, bonds themselves did not make a new recovery high. TLT did. That's very interesting. At 150, this is the continuous contract, 151 and 18 30 seconds. Now, let me just move this away here. I'm going to show you something. Let me get out of here. Okay, so I want to get rid of this. I wanted to show the Chapman Wave buy mode. I'm going to talk, talk about that in a moment. Let me just close this out here because I do want to show you something that I think while I'm while I'm, it's on my mind because I'm, I'm bound to forget. So while it's on my mind, let me just do this. Look at this. This is the 30-year T-bond yield, the white line. There it is. At all-time lows way below what I'd shown even last week. Let me get rid of it. It's down there. We've never been here before. But look, the 10-year T-note yield is getting close. It's at 16.80. The, the most important low was 13.94, 1.394% back in uh, July of 2012. But this is interesting. It's made a new um, recovery, unre unrecovery low. <laughs> whatever that would be, uh, let's, let's call it a 52-week uh, low. And the five-year T-note yield has not yet gone even below three weeks ago. Slight uptrend there. So this is going to be so important. What if the, T, the five year starts to stall over here? The five year just all, almost stalls and the 30 year starts to come down a little bit more. You're going to start to get a cluster pattern. We'll be watching that really closely. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, I wanted to show that chart. I wanted to show this chart here, which is still positive. This is wood, which is the um, iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. I showed it the other day. Look at that. Leg D in the weekly, not yet pulling back. But the question here is, are we going to get a leg D now or later 
in the Philadelphia housing sector uh, index, which is the HGX. 225.67 was the high three weeks ago, and we're at 215, quite a way down. So, um, as Bill says in the den, Basel, visual flattening of the yield curve from your triple yield curve. Yep, I'm going to be watching that real closely because that would go inside with copper and say, hey, we are in a recession or we're going to a recession um, or at least some kind of economic slowdown. And I, I got a feeling if I'm looking at... If I'm looking at the autos, which should be doing well, I mean, everywhere you look, you see new Fords, you see the new General Motors. I love the ad with the Buick. Buick, Buick, she says, Buick goes to the wrong car. Oh, that's a Buick. Uh, and they really are nice, and they, they, they're getting really good reviews. Um, I just find the front grille a little heavy. This is, this is a design thing for my own taste. But sitting in it, I really enjoyed it. I haven't driven one. I will in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to start looking and, and get, taking some time to to drive some of these cars. So I, I just uh, I need to do that. So um, in the meantime, back at the ranch, uh, let's go on. And we're going to look at the dollar. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that just yet. So the dollar is right up there. It's making a high-level consolidation. The MACD is still good. Stochastic starting to pull back quite sharply. It's at 75%. Price is holding. So what can happen is that you could get a rectangle formation here, slightly higher highs. Doesn't mean to have to go all that much higher. Um, weekly chart is still very good, but getting a little toppy, both uh, technically um, and the, the stochastic starting to pull back a little bit, but the, the price is still going up. And that we, monthly chart, well, we'll see what February has for us. If February, in fact, doesn't see a new high above uh, 95.48 in the continuous, in the uh, U.S. dollar index, that'll be quite something for the whole of February. I, I don't think so. I think it's going to make a new recovery high in February. So, um now, uh, let's, oh, the euro, EUR, USD, it's really trying to form some kind of a base here. Um, the stochastic rallied very well. The, the euro right now should not be at 1.129. It should be at 1.145. 1. Uh, it should even be at 1.5 based on the stochastic and the MACD turning up. So I'm I'm kind of disappointed in what I'm looking at. And if you put it together with the crude oil, look at that chart. See, it's also struggling. You've had the technicals really improving, yet the price hasn't been able to push higher. So that says to me, be very careful. Now, one of the things that I'm looking at here is um, the VIX index. So the VIX index is holding really well. If today being Friday, on a weekly basis, let me just move this away here. Okay, 120 minute chart we don't need right now. The VIX is way above the 17.749 period exponential moving average in the weekly and in the daily, which is at 18.89. And that is suggesting that the selling pressure that we're looking at is for real. And that there's a good chance. Oh, look, now the Dow's down 151, S&P's down 20. Now, what's fascinating to me, and Visa was really part of the responsibility, is that the futures were down huge. And then the Dow hardly moved at all. It was down, what, at one point it was down like 11 or something. Um, give me a break. That, that kind of divergence between the futures and the cash says that something's going on that is very unusual. And that was the reason that there were a couple of stocks in both the S&P and the Dow that were just uh, inflating the price, shall we say. Um, good, good time to be talking about that. Um, so... Um, as, I, as it stands right now, it gives me a moment that, that I've been wanting to do. I, I did it for my subscribers yesterday. I'll do it again now today for you. There's a pattern I showed. It is seldom that I grab a, a chart like this and overlay it onto another chart just for demonstration purposes, not the Dow chart. Usually, I'm, I'm very happy with my Dow daily. I wanted to show the Dow daily in a larger context, so I showed this inside uh, chart, and this one... Uh, shows the Dow over a period of, oh, in this case, it's going back to July of 2014. So what we're looking at here is a daily chart, 
and it shows you the decisive arch formation that was formed that went to a lower a low in that October 15th decline. Then it went up and made this kind of a V-shaped pattern at the top with a slightly higher right, uh, right uh, shoulder. And then what happened is it started to turn down. And what I'd shown yesterday or the day before, I can't remember now, was that there was a platform here. And that platform had 17,067 yeah, 17, as the low. What I also did is I expanded the chart to show that there was, in fact, a large arch formation uh, in, in a shorter term context, going back to December. And within that context, you had gone to, if, because of yesterday's action, I didn't know at the time, but I'd say that if we go below 17,243, 17, all of a sudden you're looking at the pattern that says lower lows and lower highs. Once you do that, you have Seventeen thousand four forties, I think, at the time, would be very strong resistance, and that there was a very good chance that if we started to fail today, and we took out seventeen thousand, uh, seventeen thousand, I think I'd say seventeen thousand uh, three twenty to seventeen thousand two eighty, there was a good chance that we could pull back further. Now, what we're looking at is. I had a left side, right side price time match. Wow, I wonder if I can get to that. Yeah, let me just show you something here. Uh, there we go. Uh, no, it's not that. It is this one right there. In the Chapman Wave methodology, what you look for is a lowest low bar. And from that, you want to count successively higher peaks. I mean, that's just about... There's nothing that can be as simple as that. And once you succeed, especially if you go past B or especially if you go past A and then uh, with a strong move up, but especially if you go past B in a strong move to C, there's a really good chance you're going to get to a D. What is the objective of the Chapman Wave methodology? The core, at least a D, four higher peaks. Sometimes they can be hundreds of points. If it's a monthly chart, it can actually go on for months if, 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 if you're lucky enough to be able to get to the right position. Now, in this particular instance, that's the easy part of the Chapman Way methodology. What happens after D can become a little complicated in that there are things to look for. It's not quite so easy. It can be very simple sometimes. It just goes on to E, F, and G. You cannot get an H. There's no such thing. Just like in music, you can only go um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You get, you know, no H's. Um, and in this particular instance, let me now show you something else. Let me go from there to if I can find it. Oh, I hope I've got it right there. I had shown this weeks ago, and I, sh I shown this to say, if we broke to the upside and broke that trend line, that dash trend line, this is the Dow chart, then we would have by the 29th, 28th, 29th, 30th of uh, uh, January, we would have a retest of the high of 18,103. If we start to break down by February the 4th, we would have a breakdown and we would go below uh, the 17,200s and 17,067. That's the slow right over here. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Basil, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignition Sour. Dow's down 150. SP's down 20. And we're going to, uh, what was I doing before? We're going to go straight to Jason in Spokane, Washington. Jason, how are you? Perfect. How about yourself? Very well, thank you. So, you would like to look, oh, you're listening from KSBN up in Spokane, right? Yes. Very nice. You'd like to look at? DGAZ. Now, my question to you is, do you have a position in this? I'm looking to get in. Okay, folks, we're looking at DGAZ trading at 8.33, up 47 cents. And, in fact, what is it? It is the, uh, what is it called? It's called the VS three times inverse natural gas ETN. So this is a little dangerous to get in, although I do see it going high. But let me explain to you what I'm looking at. Um, I had shown a little earlier, I had shown a, the basic, the core concept of the Chapman wave that goes to at least a D. In this case, it went to a D, pulled back. It started off a low of about $2.50 back in um, November, and it rallied to the D in January, in December 26. It went to 7.27. Then it has a very sharp pullback, but what it does is it very quickly goes to an E. But if you're looking at the MACD and the stochastic, they were still very strong. And then it goes to E and an F. F is where you start to expect that something really uh, more serious could happen. But instead what it does, it pulls back, holds a nine-period moving average, and then it pops up to a G. That's the sixth highest, four, five, six, seven, seventh highest um, peak in the Chapman wave. And 
out of the blue from the level of 892 it just plunges down to 490 I mean that on a percentage basis that is huge almost 50 percent with the MACD and stochastic turning down and then it has a counter trend I call it a counter trend rally only because it hasn't made a new recovery high I suspect based on the technicals that there's a real good chance it's going to retest the eight dollars and 87 to eight dollars and 95 to make a slightly higher high and the reason why i say that is that that would make leg d in the weekly chart and continue leg c in the monthly so now let me put it this way in terms of risk reward if i go to natural gas i'll go to the continuous contract the natural gas continuous contract is just in the process it is really close it's a 2.672 let me just grab the monthly because I want to show the much longer term. And the, and the long, a uh, two, what did I say? The low is two, six, three, seven. And the low is 2.705. Hmm, that's interesting. It's gone below that. Okay, all right. So now we've looked at, yesterday I looked at oil. I looked at, I also looked at the natural gas. I also looked at, I'm trying to think of what it was. What was the other thing I looked at yesterday um, to show that it was breaking the left side? Oh, the high-grade high copper. Was it high-grade copper? Yep, high-grade copper. Had broken all the left side. So all the commodities, except for gold, gold is being perceived right now, I suspect, as a harbinger of safety, a currency of safety. So it's kind of excluded from the crowd, from the commodity crowd. I think that you've got your eye on the right medium at this point, but I think in terms of risk-reward, here's the problem, uh, DGAZ. If I go to DGAZ, oh, I remember now. I was showing it on the UNG, and that's on the on the downside. So okay, I, I, I'm I'm good. It's all coming back to me now. When I'm looking at this, the 200 period moving average held as beautiful support. I think it has a little bit to go to play it for. You know, the percentage is big to go from 827 to uh, 893, 20 cents. What is that? That's about say six percent. You know, I. Wow, this is tough for me only because I'm looking at it as a percentage uh, uh, situation. You know what I'm going to do? Um, let me look at the 120 minute chart. A, B, C, D, start a brand new A, B, C. Okay. Oh, I, are you able to watch this very closely? Yeah, I was wondering, you called the D at uh, looking at like eight. 80, 890. Uh, the D in the in the daily was uh, on the 26th of December at 777. G okay, and was then you the, mentioned something yeah, about G was 892. 892. Okay, yes. it would be better to wait and see what it reacts when it gets around the 890 mark. Okay, so if uh, all right, let me just give you two scenarios. One okay. is, it's not at the high of the day, so I have a little bit of a comfortability factor. If you were to buy it right here and you put a stop in, I don't know what the percentage, uh, well, I do know. So that's 820, let me use the, uh, I've got two scenarios. One is you just hold off and you see how it handles the 892 area if it gets there by Monday or Tuesday. Whoops, I'm hearing a break. Can you hold on? Okay. Okay, I'll be back with Jason. We want to talk about natural gas because it's getting real close to a double. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report. And make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. 
For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 25% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Darrow Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you, something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Uh, Basil Chapman, Taki's Ignition Sour. We're on with Jason in Spokane, Washington. We're looking at DGAZ. This is the uh, three times inverse natural gas, and of course, it's running very sharply. So, what I was going to say when it was at 827 is that I would start a position here if you were watching it real closely and you wanted to have a very short term swing trade. What I'd be looking at is I'd have a 10 cent stop. I'd make it real tight because it's either going to work and it's going to work right now into the close, or it's just not going to work. Or you can just wait. And what I'd be saying is, looking at it as it stands right now, I can see it going to um, $8, and it should make a new high above $8.93 for the weekly chart. doesn't have to do it this week, but that's what I'm looking at. And if that's the case, that's where I would say that, that um, natural gas has its greatest chance of having some kind of a, uh, a rally. That means this uh, DJAZ would have a pullback, and natural gas would have a rally. So I'd be looking at, at it there, and then if it gets to 8 point, what did I say, 96, 90, above 8.92, I start looking at the UNG or something like that for the inverse as a rally, just a counter trend rally, go from the 13s, let's say, uh, UNG right now is a 1364 United States gas, uh, a natural gas fund, and having a 
pretty good bounce to the 14, 70, maybe even the 15, 30 level, and then maybe doing a retest of the lows. So that's the way I would look at it. Um, or you, you, you could just hold off and not do anything. But my thinking was that the way it's acting right now, uh, DGAZ looked like it wanted to go higher, and it looked like it wanted to get towards the uh, into the into the um, high eight. I keep forgetting what it is. I've said it about ten times. Eight ninety two, uh, ninety three area. So I hope that helps yeah, you, Jason. Yes, it does. The inverse is UGAZ. Yes, uh, you, yeah, that's right. UGAZ. I remember that, and I, I just uh, there it goes. All right. So okay, I hope that helps okay. you. Great. Thank Have you. a good weekend. Yes, Thank you, you for calling. Let's go to David in Hopsville, Hopsville, Maine. Oh, David, how are you? Very, very well, Basil. Good That's where again. Bowdoin College is. It Bowdoin? Correct. Yeah, yeah. I had a good friend who lives up in Portland, but they also stayed in the house for a couple uh, for a summer up in Hopswell. It's very pretty there. A lot of little kind of. It looks like Florida. You've got all those um, um, fingers that go out into the uh, into the lake. Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's breathtaking, and it doesn't. You know, I'm relatively new to this area, but it, it's it's. I don't see it getting old anytime soon. That's <laughs> great. Does. Very nice. And, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, um, you're very close to a, a lot of uh, places, if you're a cultural you know, center, Portland, uh, even even Hops, but has, uh, I, I believe that Bowdoin has some really, oh, they have that fantastic art collection, that person, those, that couple in New York that, um, oh, he was a postman and she did something else. Uh, she was a librarian and every penny that they got, they bought uh, uh, paintings from uh, contemporary artists during their lifetime who became very famous and they had this incredible collection and I think 40% of it was given to uh, Bowdoin, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm relatively new to that and I've been learning about that and that's something I'll dig a little deeper on. Uh, yeah. I've been meantime, about, you'd like to look at? Well, it's, yeah, it's Coco specifically. Um, there's the ETN, which is a, the ticker is NIB, N-I-B. Right. Um, you know, I have, there's, there's, you know, I'm trying to tie together what I've known from Chapman Wave and also the fundamentals of the market, you know, what I see in the wholesale end of it. And, you know, at this juncture, I see the price destruction yep. as of late. And I'm, you know, there's, there's part of me that, that senses that this is a commodity with, that could meet some contrarian delight, <laughs> so to speak. Right. Uh, but there's just the fundamentals speak don't don't speak to the the price destruction that we're getting in the futures market. Right. And so now I kind of pull back. I'm looking at it more in the monthly charts, and rather than the than the, the shorter term charts, because it's just there's too much noise in there for someone who's looking at more how that translates to the wholesale market. So, so what is the what is the symbol for Coco? Do you remember? Gosh, you know, I don't. You know, I had a bunch of charts lined up with me, and they don't have them. But I wanted to talk. Maybe to you. someone in the den will give me. I just need it so that I can. I, I I know I've done the chart, but I just off the top of my head, cotton is CT. I just don't remember what cocoa is. Someone is, uh, is bound to give me the symbol. Okay. Meantime, back at the ranch, NIB is trading at thirty five oh eight. It's up nine cents. First time it's had a little bit of a bounce in ages, and. I'm looking at the uh, monthly chart, which so far is not very good. And the weekly chart, if you look at this, has gone to a peak D. Remember the Chapman wave, what we look for? I'm just taking it from the last low of consequence, which is the low of May, the week of May the 9th. It went to a peak D uh, with, with uh, uh, an evening star type candle, and then it comes plunging down now the easy thing to do would be to say hey wait a minute this looks very visually like one of those patterns that is discussed here at tfn and very often it's the a to b equals c to d i have something else that i use which is called the chapman wave extension but i'm going to just put that aside for a moment because what it says is that if there is a one-to-one -one, this could go down to 32.82 but i did a little bit of work on it just as during the break and my impression is uh, CCH. I thought it was CC. Let me just check this. If I can get my CC. Yep. I, oh, got it. Great. Oh, man. Where is it? I used to have it all notated. It's just disappeared. So A. So he goes A, B. Yep, it is C. So it's a C minus so far. 
and so it's the same thing so I'll go back to NIB because they're very close so in this NIB chart what I've really got is that there's a down move that should take cocoa to the low of 34.16 in a left side right side price time match and that should come in I, I actually rushed a little bit I shouldn't have I should have gone to that one there and I'll tell you right now what I'm looking at I'm looking at that there and that should take you to the week of uh, February the 13th and that should says 34.16 so by it's still in a down mode the MACD is not good the stochastic is not good it suggests that the two levels to watch are the low of the 3rd of January, the week of the 3rd of January at 34.76. That's only 20, 30 cents away. And then the next one is 34.16, which is less than a point away. So we are very, I think you're right in the sense that we're getting really close to some, you'd like to play the bounce, is that correct? Yeah, I do. Okay. Now, um, you're not the Dave that sent me an email, did you? Okay, all right. It's a very interesting thing because I, I, I got this and I was like, whoa, that's it, because you said you knew, uh, but uh, maybe not. So, okay, this is what I'm looking at here. Um, I would not do anything yet, even though there could be a bounce because of the sharpness of the decline. The sharpness of the decline says there should be a rally and then an, at least another H formation, like lowercase h. 35.96 is the nine period moving average, only 90 cents away. And then it should come back and retest. Probably going to break the low of yesterday of 34.77. I'd start to look at it if it's making a cushion in the 34s. And if it's doing that, give me a call. That will be maybe Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Maybe we're getting real close. But I, I, I'd be hesitant to treat it as a position other than just a real quick trade, like a 120-minute swing trade into Monday afternoon or something, I, I'm not looking at it like that. Unlike uh, what I was looking at before with natural gas, the opposite side of natural gas having a bounce, this is still weak and any bounce should fail. So I, I, I don't see a trade just yet. But uh, let's keep it, uh, keep it in mind for Coco and let's look at it maybe... I suspect by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, we'll have a real good chance to see what it's doing. Okay? Okay, yeah, I've, I've got patience, so we'll talk then. Thank you. Good, and, and enjoy yourself up in Hobbsville, Maine. It's a very right. pretty place. I, Thank you for going. I am. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So let me just, I, I, I got an email. Let me just see. Usually I read these emails out loud without even uh, uh, checking them out because I, I, thank goodness, I don't get <laughs> too many hate mails, anything like that. So this one says, um, to Basil Chapman at TFNN, hello, I've got two points. First, I hear you mentioned that your service has a newsletter. Yes, I have a newsletter. It's called The Opening Call. I'm a new subscriber. I think he meant a new subscriber to the, uh, to the den. Is that right? I'm a new subscriber. Oh, uh, to my work? Wait, well, I asked the two questions. I'm a new subscriber and have been reading and studying the charts posted on TFNN.com on a daily basis. But do you have an actual... But do you have an actual newsletter, too, that you send to your subscribers? Answer is yes. Or, or are the posted charts essentially the newsletter? No, no. What I post here are, are, are sometimes very, very different. And um, so that's the question. Second... I started trading three months ago, and since purchasing your Chapman Wave methodology CD at Book uh, and applying, and that's only available at TFN, folks. It's called the Chapman Wave, uh, uh, introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, um, um, and applying it in January to the best of my understanding, still studying and learning the Chapman Wave methodology, I finally started to win. January has had a highly successful win rate. Hopefully it's starting to click. My trading sample size is still small and my risk reward is poor, but my win rate was 90% in January. Wow. Um, thank, uh, he didn't put the wow. I just said the wow. Thanks for the education. Listening to your daily show has helped too. Puzzled about the newsletter and appreciative of the education, Dave. Uh, that's why I just asked David before if he, he had written to me. No. So this is uh, someone else. And um, so first of all, thank you very much, David. Let me show you the chart. Let me just show you. First of all, let's go back to the chart pattern I was looking at right here. Uh, where, did it, where did it go? There it is. Uh, nope, not there. It's right here. Uh, and it's this one here. Okay. Looking at that particular pattern, um, 
what we're looking at here is from the lowest, most identifiable low bar, you merely count each successively higher peak, A, B, C, D. Now, the big issue is going to be if we've gone into a cell mode in the weekly chart, and we will know by the close today. So let me just get you, get the chart up here, this chart right here. Let me go, whoops, move that back in there. And I want to go to the Dow, I-N-D-U. We can do the S&P. So, so far, look, the MACD is, the MACD is negative. The stochastic has now gone 80, under 80%. The candle that we're looking at here is just on. It's about to break, in fact, the uptrend. It is going to close today. There's no way that it will close above 17,579 in the Dow, 200 and something points. Well, it did it yesterday. I don't think it can do that today. So there's a real good chance that I have to go to a sell signal in the weekly chart. But I can't go to the sell signal at a peak C. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what to call it because I can't put a down arrow above a C. So what it leaves me with is that I've got a cell mode in the weekly chart of the Dow. Let me just go back to this over here. I, a reason why I'm discussing this, Dave, is that you have been looking at the A, B, C, D on the upside. But if the market changes, if the tide, the larger tide of the weekly is being impacted now by the daily going into a deeper correction, then you are going to find that you either start to fail at a B or a C on the upside, or you've got to be looking at the inverse, like we were looking at a moment ago, the inverse uh, ETFs to start your peak A, B, C, D. So I'll try to get to that in a moment. We've got other callers. We've got Jerry in the back bay. Jerry, how are you? Four better. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Well, this is actually Ben from Tallahassee. <laughs> oh, did I skip something? Oh, I didn't even see that. Ben, how are you? Well, good. I've been called worse. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, it, um, it, I mean, uh, maybe what you're getting digging into is exactly what um, what I was going to ask. And, and, and really, my, my, my main question is on the weekly, Peak C, two yep. questions, is, is kind of like your trend gauge where it's in the high 90% accuracy you know, I've been trying to keep a biased tone just because of that, where you say when you're up here at the highs and you're in peaks in you know, the weekly, it's very, very, very rare where you don't make that D. And I was just curious if you can, you know, is that in the high 90s, kind of, kind of like the trend? And then my second question is, um, at what point would you say the weekly has to reset? Okay. Great questions. And let me ask it, answer it as succinctly as possible. Number one is, if I had to go back and show you not hundreds, but thousands of weekly charts, you will see that somehow or other, I can go back and say, oh, I made a mistake. That wasn't a peak C. It was really a G. Very seldom is there just no question whatsoever that it is a C minus or a B minus at an all time high in a weekly chart. Invariably, you will get the coordination in the Chapman wave to get at least a D, E, or F, and then you, or a G, and then you'll be able to get that cell signal. So I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at the, even now with all the selling, it is incredible. Look at this chart I'm showing right now of the daily Dow. We've used, I discussed this this morning with the subscribers. What I said was, oh, an answer to Dave is, yes, I have a subscription. If you go to the front page of TFN, you'll see it's called the opening call, and you can subscribe to that. It's a daily newsletter, and you've got to click on to go to it, and I start updating my, my charts all the way from about 7 and 6.30 in the morning. The Dow chart goes first, this one here, and then all the others start coming out. 8.35 is the last one. It's the trader's corner. So look, with all the bad news, with the dollar screaming higher, with bonds screaming higher, with gold moving up, with the bad news from Europe, whatever it is, we still haven't broken 70,067. So we've used time. So I'm going to answer the question and I'll be right back. I don't know if Jerry's still.
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom Optimization capability. Nadex's unique short term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N A D E X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. Learn about good health and fitness. Living a primal lifestyle with Nico and Paige. Next on TFNN. Discussing in a moment... I made a mistake in Bank of America weekly chart. I did put an up arrow because it was such a sharp decline in October that I started a brand new ABC. But in fact, it was a big mistake. This is exactly what I was looking for as a possibility in the Dow and the S&P as alternate counts. But I can't do it because the October low went so low. But in fact, here I've got D. And then it was a decline, but the MACD didn't turn down. In fact, it should have been E slash A, 
um, F slash B and G slash C and eventually became a G because it plunged below the low that was made. So this is a great example of that leg G that goes higher because of the MACD. It was my, I, I saw it and then I forgot to put the alternate count in. My bad. But in the Dow, I can't do that. I can't do that either in the S&P. So my assessment here is that we're using up time. We are rolling over to different areas of the market and that what will actually happen is that we will not break down in the Dow to the low of October of 15,855, but somewhere maybe underneath 17,067, somewhere in here, maybe the 16,900, 16,700, somewhere in that area. We're going to turn around, and at that point, we're going to have a pretty darn good rally that's going to take us to D in the Dow on the weekly, C in the S&P, and then it'll take another two weeks before you finally get that. So I'm thinking February has a chance to see some kind of a low, and then we go higher. And at that point, if the uh, biotechs and other areas that have been absolutely on fire, the restaurants, etc., start to come down, that's when we can get the 11 to 12 percent correction. Hope that helps you. Yeah. Um, so, so what? So what? What convinces you that we'll be going below 17 is the VIX. If if the well, first of all, if the VIX, let's just go to the VIX. So the VIX, even now with all this going on, is still only at twenty point thirty five. My suspicion is that any bad news is going to take the VIX maybe to a maximum towards the twenty four to twenty five, twenty six area, not much higher than that. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but that's kind of my thinking. And at that mm -hmm. point, we're going to get a really nice counter trend bounce. I'm seeing some stocks that are actually holding really well. I'm looking at others that are looking like they are really topped out. And I'll Got cover it. that next week. Very good. Have a great weekend, Basil. So, thank you very much for calling. Let's go to, is that uh, Scott in Safety Harbor? Hi, Scott. Long time no talk to, Basil. I've been having a great time with Gilead. They oh, really great. They set up a nice uh, trading range, and it scares other people, but I guess I'm holding the pulse, so it doesn't scare me, and the patient is doing well. <laughs> Good, as long as uh, you, we've got someone in there holding the fort. So you want to look at me. I haven't got much time, yeah, but back you want with to my look old at favorite BAC, but I'll tell you the truth. I, I got a real uh, uh, stomach cleansing this morning. Uh, I, it actually made me nauseous when I saw Shake Shack get you know twenty five seven dollars to the green i don't know why it just made me nauseous i think it made me nauseous because it shows the insanity i don't know if you watch cnbc but even even the ceo and the people there were just dumbfounded by it you know? <laughs> yeah but you see when you get the, we haven't had sexy stocks for a while this is one of those so oh, oh I, i'm sorry I, just uh, before we do anything else my my engineer just remind me i'm sorry robert i skipped you um i'm just gonna if you don't mind i just want to mention to robert he wanted to look at win w-i-n-n -N. i'm just going to mention to him i'd be very careful Win looks like at 149 looks like it wants to come down um i i wouldn't do anything with it right now on the long side if you are short i would just say make your stop at about 157. now let's go back to bank of america sorry so what i'm going to suggest to you bank of america right now is trying to form some kind of a base but i've got 14.91 as very important support for bank of america so just they have a fairly tight stop i think it could bounce here it's 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 trying to hold be careful. Thanks for calling, and I'll Bye. be back on Monday. Check out my opening call. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
This is TFNN.